In this video, we work through an example using uh, Laplace transforms to solve a second order differential equation uh, for an RLC circuit. So for a general RLC circuit with some source B, which depends on time, you have a resistance which uh, acts as a damping component the inductance, which acts as an inertial component, trying to uh, resist changes in the, in the circuit, and the capacitor, which acts as your oscillating term. And for this type of circuit, the charge in the capacitor follows the, sec the following differential equation. And we're going to uh, solve this for the case where the initial charge in the capacitor is equal to zero. And the initial current in the circuit, so the change of charge as a function of time, is also equal to zero. So there's no charge in the capacitor and there's no current uh, in, the, in the circuit. We're going to take uh, an inductance of two Henry's, a resistance of one ohm, and a capacitance of 0 0.5 farads. We're going to, for our uh, voltage, It's going to be uh, the difference of two heavy side functions, which results in this being equal to one between times five and 20 and equal to zero otherwise. So how you can think of this is the circuit is off at let's say five seconds at five units of time you flip on the switch and then 15 units of time later you turn off the switch and you see how the charge in the capacitor evolves in time so replacing these values into our variables we're left with this differential equation. We'll leave this as B of T for now. And we're going to take the Laplace transform on both sides. And because the Laplace transform is uh, basically an integration it's a distributive operation. So you can, if you take the Laplace transform of all of this, of the sum of several things, that's equal to the sum of the Laplace transforms of each individual term in here. So this, using the properties of Laplace transforms shown in the last video, you should end up with the following. And you should verify this for yourself to make sure that you understand uh, the process. This term, you have to take the derivative first and then evaluate it at zero. So these first three terms are the result of the second derivative. You can put that say, in parentheses for now. So this corresponds to taking the Laplace transform of this term. This second one corresponds to taking the Laplace transform of the first derivative of the charge. And finally, the last term corresponds to Laplace transform of this term over here. And this will be equal to 
Laplace transform of a voltage. And if you carry out the integration for these two functions, so if you carry out the integration, you should end up with the following term. This is the result of taking the Laplace transform of both heavy side functions. Since we had set our both of our initial conditions, q of zero and dq dt of zero uh, to zero over here, then these terms don't contribute anything. And you're left with the following this is s over s then you can factor out this q of s and bring everything else to that side so i'm jumping a little step over here but you should make sure to fill in the details for yourself so we have this term that we had over here, and then the term that was left from factoring out capital Q of S will be over here. And for later convenience, we're going to separate this into two parts. We have our exponentials and then we'll call capital Y of S all of these terms here. So one over each one of these terms is Y of S. And the reason we're doing that is because Laplace transforms have a special property when you combine them with heavy side functions. So if capital F of S is the Laplace transform of your function F of T, then the Laplace transform of a heavy side function shifted by C times your function also shifted by C is given by that. And conversely, if f of t is the inverse Laplace transform of capital F of s, it's then the heavy side function shifted by C times your original function is equal to the inverse Laplace transform of E minus C S capital F of S. And you can see that this, uh, it, this form is very close to what we had before. This is an aside a bit of a tangential property that we're going to use. And that's the reason why we rewrote this as follows. Okay, so to be able to find our original solution in the time domain, so little q of t, we're going to need to take the inverse Laplace transform of that. And we're going to use this property, which looks very similar to what we have over here 
to more efficiently uh, calculate that. And to be able to do that, you don't need to worry about this side anymore. You know that this is going to give you a heavy side function, but we do need to know what the inverse Laplace transform of this capital Y of S is. So we can find this corresponding uh, factor. So to find little q of t, you want to take the inverse Laplace transform of q of s. Uh, so to be able to use tables, you need to put these factors into uh, a certain form that is found in tables. And you can, you can find these tables in the internet or consult uh, a textbook on uh, differential equations. Uh, so in this particular example, we're gonna need to calculate the inverse Laplace transform of capital Y of S so that we can find, and so we can use this, this property. And to do that, we need to split Y of S into its partial fraction decomposition. We had set y of s. Was this? Right. We took out this part and put it all into capital Y of s. And when you do a partial fraction decomposition, you have uh, certain unknown coefficients. In this case, we'll call it little a one over S, so you're splitting up this part and this part. When you have only a linear term, you only have a constant term on top. When you have a quadratic term, you need a linear term in your partial fraction decomposition. And if you work through this, finding uh, figuring out what the constants A, B, and C are, you should find that A is equal to one half. Uh, little b is equal to one minus one, and little c is equal to negative one half, where I've pulled out the negative uh, outside over here. And you're left with that. And to be able to put this in a form that's found in tables, we're gonna to need to massage it a little bit more. So this first term can remain like that. This second term, we're going to factor out a one half. Split up this one half into the sum of one quarter plus one quarter. and uh, factor out this second order polynomial. Into this. And again, you should be trying to fill in the details and consult a table of Laplace transforms to understand why we're uh, massaging it into this particular form. Then from a table of Laplace transforms, we should find that the inverse Laplace transform of capital Y of S is given by one half minus one half 
e to the minus t over four cosine square root of 15 t over four plus this. This is a 15 t over four. And this gives us, we'll call it lowercase t. Okay, so this is the inverse Laplace transform of this whole expression over here. Going back to our, our property over here. So we found basically what this little f is, lowercase f. And we know from this property that when you multiply something like this with exponents in the Laplace domain, when you take the inverse Laplace transform, you just end up with a, an extra heavy side function factor. So what this means then is uh, the inverse Laplace transform of capital Q of S, which is our original charge as a function of time that we're interested in. is equal to the following. So you have your heavy side function from the e to the minus five s. You have the uh, your function y up here shifted by five units. The other heavy side function factor from the e to the minus 20 s that we had in the Laplace transform. And your function y shifted by 20 units. Okay, so this is what this looks like. So we have the differential equation we're looking to solve under these initial conditions. This was our voltage. And this was the final form of our solution for the charge and the capacitor as a function of time. Y was given by this complicated expression, which we found through the inverse Laplace transform. And the graph is more uh, illustrative than this. This is a fairly complex functional form. So what this looks like is as follows. The red square wave is our voltage. So as I mentioned before, at time t is equal to five, you can think of it as turning on a switch. You leave the switch on for 15 units of time and then you turn it off. And what happens in the charge of the capacitor is when you turn on the switch, it starts gathering charge and you have a, uh, a damped oscillation that will eventually reach a steady state value. However, before it can do that, you turn off the switch and then the capacitor starts uh, the charge starts to oscillate in the capacitor again, uh, gradually damping out to zero charge. So this is what this solution is telling us uh, about the behavior of the charge in the capacitor and the RLC circuit when it's subject to uh, this type of voltage, turning on a switch and then waiting some time and then turning it back off. So this was one application of Laplace transforms where we had a discontinuous function uh, in the right-hand side. In the next video, we'll do a less uh, complicated example, if you will, where the function will be continuous and you'll be able to more clearly see the process that you need to take when working out problems uh, in differential equations using Laplace transforms.